let us now talk about how models are supported in Ionic and how Ionic forms are designed. Now, these two are two separate entities, but combined together provides a very interesting way of providing user interface um, elements for the user. Let's look at forms first, and then we'll look at how we can create Ionic models to display forms for the user. Ionic forms are similar to the forms that you have seen with standard HTML. Um, it supports all the input elements, the text area, and the remaining elements. Ionic also adds a few new um, elements to forms, which are useful in designing forms for the mobile environment. Ionic form elements are all grouped together as items in a list as you will see when we look at some examples. For input items, the labels can be specified using either a placeholder, which means that the, the uh, label will be displayed inside the form element itself, or they can be displayed as inline, which means that it'll be independent of the input area, but will be displayed right next to the input area. The um, input uh, label can be displayed as stacked, which means that the label is on top and then the input area is at the bottom. Or the label itself can be uh, displayed as floating, which means that the label will start out as part of the input element. But as you start typing, the label will automatically uh, move upwards to create enough space for you to input the data into the input element. Now, we will look at the use of inline um, input elements in the examples next, but you can easily create forms with any of the other variations. Details can be found on the Ionix website. Let's look at an example of how you can create a form. In this example, this form is actually supported inside a model. So that's the reason why I was covering models and forms together. Now, in this case, we are using inline labels. So you have two input elements here, the username and password. You can, on the left side, see how these are declared in the code. So for the form, you would um, declare a div with a class list here. And then inside that, we will use the label elements with the class item, item input to declare the various input elements there. The uh, label for the input elements are declared using the span class input label, and then followed by the input, uh, which in this case is of the type text here. And you can see the ng model being used to tie the input value through two-way data binding to the JavaScript variable. So, um, much of this should look familiar to you because you have seen forms in the previous courses. So a similar approach is also used with Ionic. In addition to the standard form elements, Ionic also supports input icons, which can be included inside input elements, or header inputs, which can be included as part of the header bar of your Ionic application. In addition, because of the mobile device capabilities, we can also use toggles, which allow you to uh, select on and off a uh, chosen item there. You have checkboxes and radio button lists, which will be formatted somewhat differently from the way forms are formatted in the standard uh, web page because of the fact that the mobile device um, size is different. So the way checkboxes and radio button lists are supported is somewhat different and more suitable for the touch input that mobile devices support. Also, um, Ionic forms support another element called as a range, which is like a sliding bar, which allows you to select a value by sliding the element left and right. Uh, in the example next, we will see the use of a toggle and a select item in creating a form. Here we see another form example. 
you can see the use of a select element in the form. So in this case, the number of guests would be uh, can be selected using a set of options that are declared there. Similarly, you see the use of a toggle element there. So the toggle element in this case is also declared as an item, item toggle. And inside there, you see the use of a div class track and div class handle. This is what is used to create the handle and track. So the way it works is that you can slide this element left uh, and right using your thumb. So that's the way the toggle element is designed in Ionic. Ionic also supports modals which are shown on top of the user's main view temporarily. So when you bring up an Ionic model, it covers the screen and then shows up just like we have seen models on the standard web page. For creating Ionic models, you use Ionic model view for enclosing the content as you will see in an example next. The models are controlled from the controller using JavaScript. So we will see how we can show and hide Ionic models using JavaScript functions. The login form that you saw earlier is actually enclosed inside an Ionic model. The way the Ionic model is uh, constructed is shown on the left side. So here you have an Ion model view uh, which encloses a header bar and Ion content. The form itself is enclosed inside the Ion content tags. The Ion header bar allows you to declare the uh, title for the header and also include a button there which when clicked will dismiss the model. This Ionic model view is declared inside a template which is then used to construct the Ionic model in JavaScript. We will go to the next um, example to see how we can create this Ionic model using JavaScript. To create a model in Ionic, inside a controller, you would declare an Ionic model. The Ionic model is a service that is provided by Ionic, which you need to inject into your controller. In addition, the Ionic model supports various functions. One function in particular is the from template URL. So this function is, to, is used to create the model in JavaScript. So in this case, using the template that I have de uh, declared in login.html, I am creating this model by calling ionic model from template URL and then supplying the template uh, as one of the parameters. The other parameter that is uh, accepted by the from template URL is the scope which we are declaring there. Uh, in addition, uh, when this function returns, the then the prom, then promise is can be called, and this is where the model's reference is returned to you. So you will save the model's reference onto your scope so that subsequently you can refer to this model within your JavaScript code. Once you have a reference to your model, you can then call the show and hide functions on this model in order to show and hide the model. So for example, you can declare uh, JavaScript functions within your controller as shown in this example. So you can say scope close login and then inside there you are calling the scope model hide and then similarly scope login you can call the scope model show in order to show the model. So this is how you support models in Ionic. To help us consolidate our understanding of Ionic models and forms, we will go on to the next exercise where you will construct show and hide models within your app to display information, in particular forms for seeking users input. So in addition, we will design forms that are included inside the model and then we'll show and hide the forms and also allow the user to submit information using these forms.